What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And boy, do we got some breaking news for you today. So a lady by the name of Joanne Segovia was arrested by the feds for her role in an international drug smuggling ring, right? Normally, this would not be breaking news, so to speak. People get busted for that kind of stuff all the time. However, she is the executive director of the San Jose Police Officers Association. So I'm going to read you very briefly. This is what the San Jose Police Officers Association is, okay? It's their union, but this is what they say on their website. The San Jose Police Officers Association, SJPOA, represents its members to sustain and enhance wages, benefits, and working conditions. We emphatically support the belief that we should work together to attain what is rightfully ours. While remembering that we are dedicated law enforcement officers dedicated to serving all segments of the community with the pride and care of professional police officers. Yeah, that part. Uh -huh. So she's the executive director, right? And, and I'll get into the details of, of the indictment in just a second. But it's interesting in, in police uh, uh, websites and, and press releases and stuff, you know, commentary that's coming out. Um, this was just announced yesterday. They're already saying, oh, she was a front end person. She was an office staff. She was this, she was that, right? They're minimizing her role, you know, uh, making it seem as if she was not a representative of or reflective of the law enforcement community. If you have them tell it, this is a lady that was a clerk that got busted doing some stuff and, you know, it's cool, she's arrested and, and she'll face the consequences. No, <laughs> that's very convenient rewriting of history, right? Which uh, law enforcement agencies are, are expert at doing. The executive director of the police union is a position of power. It's a position of influence. The police union itself in San Jose is very powerful, is very politically engaged, right? Um, it's very well financed. And the union represents the interests of specifically San Jose police, but also law enforcement at large, right? To be the executive director of that union is a position of privilege. It is a position of status. It is, in a perfect world, it would be a position of trust and accountability, right? Um, but, but yeah, so she was a factor uh, now, she wasn't the one kicking down your door on a raid, but she was a factor in law enforcement in San Jose and in Santa Clara County as a whole. Right. So just to kind of make that point clear. Now, what she do? What's she get in trouble for? I'm going to let you know the complaint is not very, uh, very long at all. I'm not going to necessarily read every word of it, but but I'll give you the rundown. OK, so um, she's been charged with. <coughs> excuse me. She's been charged with an attempt to illegally import a controlled substance in connected with a, screen, a scheme to bring synthetic opioids into the country and distribute them throughout the United States, right? So this criminal complaint was filed on March 27, 2023. Today is March 30th. So she's 64 years old, executive director of the San Jose Police Officer Association. She used her personal and office computers to order thousands of opioid and other pills to her home and agreed to distribute those drugs throughout the United States, right? Uh, she was picked up as part of an ongoing Homeland Security investigation. So they've been keeping an eye on this for a while and wait to hear the dates of how far this goes back, right? So I don't think this has been an eight year long investigation. I think it's a more recent investigation in which they tugged on some threads that pointed back to just how long this has been happening. I don't think they've had their eye on her for the better part of a decade. Uh, but, you know, that, that'll that come out later on. Uh, so the complaint alleges, and it's all alleged, of course, innocent until proven guilty, and sometimes even then you're still innocent. She probably not just put throw it out there. Uh -huh. Between October 2015 and January 2023, October 2015, she had at least 61 shipments mailed to her home, originating from various countries, including Hong Kong, Hungary, India, Singapore. The manifest for these shipments, you know, when you ship internationally, you have to declare what it is, right? Um, 
So makeup, wedding party favors, clocks, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, between July 2019 and January 2023, which I, does sound like the length of the investigation. And even then, that's a long investigation uh, for, for them to not actually bust a move. So we'll see. But July 2019 and January 2023, officials intercepted and opened five of these shipments, found they controlled thousands of pills of controlled substances, including synthetic opioids, tramadol, and tapenadol. Certain parcels were valued at thousands of dollars worth of drugs. Now, she wasn't the kingpin of this, right? She wasn't the mastermind to this. And, and there's some hints in there that, that kind of point to that, right? So she also used WhatsApp communication. Listen, I'm not in the business of, of you know, encouraging or, or trying to advance people's criminal activities. But this whole narrative that WhatsApp cannot be viewed, cannot be accessed, is just not true, okay? It's not. It is an encrypted uh, messaging service. It is more encrypted than standard messaging. But there is not a not WhatsApp, not Signal. It, it is not as if law enforcement cannot access those messages. They're less likely to get, to get picked up uh, by chance, so to speak. Uh, but if I and, and I would never do this because I don't I don't cooperate in this way, but if I was to give you my phone, you can see all the WhatsApp messages that I've had with other people, all the signal messages that I've had with other people. See, so you're not protected from people telling just because you're using these apps. If law enforcement got a search warrant for my phone and was able to open up my phone and click on my WhatsApp, they would be able to read what I've been doing on WhatsApp as long as I've left it in the phone. OK, now going back and retrieving messages that have been deleted and that kind of stuff is a little more challenging for law enforcement when you're using encrypted messaging services. Um, but this folks got the game mixed up. Man. It, oh, this app is good. I trust this app. You know, hey, you want to buy drugs or hey, you know, look at my guns or whatever. It's. Don't uh, if you're engaged in criminal activity, don't don't bet the farm that uh, that all oh, because they're in here. I'm somehow protected and suited. That's not how it works. So anyways, they went through her WhatsApp. Um, for example, they described a three year period between January 2020, March 2023, during which she exchanged hundreds of messages with someone using a phone with an India country code. Right. They discussed plans for shipment, payment of pills, all kinds of pictures, hundreds of pictures of, of tablets, shipping labels, packages, payment receipts. Like there's quite a paper trail, it seems, in this case, you know, of, of just stuff found in people's phones. This goofball used her work computer, too, which is just the height of arrogance. But then again, if you've been doing this stuff for almost the last 10 years and nobody's batting than I. And you can still go out there and harass families like that of Jacob Dominguez, who was killed by police and, uh, you know, uh, push back against them and, and how they're bothersome. And, you know, you can still run around and do all the other stuff you do and nobody looks at you twice. I guess at some point you get comfortable enough to figure, shoot, I'm invincible. Uh, but the feds are famous for cracking people who thought they were invincible. Why? Because somebody always tells. OK. Um, so in 2021, she was told by a supplier to send a package to a woman in North Carolina, right? She's then sent the supplier a photograph of the shipment made using her UPS account connected to the San Jose Police Officers Association, okay? Uh, there was also a message, I believe, around that time in which somebody got to her about some shipments, and she said, uh, oh, well, my bad, I'm busy with work two police officers just got shot uh but i should be home tomorrow it's so she was tripping uh she continued to order uh controlled substances even after being interviewed by federal investigators in february of 2023 just last month the feds came knocking on the door talked to her obviously she gotta know she's on the radar right 
And even then, afterwards, afterwards, she was questioned on March 13th, 2023. So just, well, like 10 days ago, uh, two weeks ago, federal agents seized a parcel in Kentucky containing valeryl fentanyl, which was addressed to Segovia. The package allegedly originated from China on March 10th, 2023, and declared its contents as a clock. So she's facing one count right now, one count with attempt to unlawfully import valeryl fentanyl, right? Violation of U.S. You know, Code 21. So she faced statutory maximum 20 years for this one offense, right? Uh, and then she could do the supervised release and, and all that other stuff. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Joanne Segovia, 64 years old. Um, now, it's curious how much time she's really going to get, right? Curious who else is going to wind up getting wrapped up in this. It's interesting a lot of times when they point to an international ring, right? When the feds announce that they've made a bust and that that because by the feds announcing this arrest, they're announcing that they've cracked this ring to some degree, right? Like the cat's out of the bag. This operation has been compromised. Okay. Most of the time they'll mention some other name, you know, they're quick to add gang labels. It was, it was the M, the NF, the, the triads. It was, you know, whoever that that was behind this, right? This white supremacist organization or the Crips or, you know, whatever. And there's no mention of that here. And the fact that the drugs are coming from predominantly, you know, Asian countries, not exclusively, um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a, some kind of Asian ring, right? That, that's where a lot of the stuff comes from anyways. That's where cartels in Mexico get their stuff from. Like that's that's where the world gets a lot of their stuff from. At least the base things used to then make the drugs that are for sale on the market. Uh, I talked a little bit about that when I did the video recently on uh, on the trend that they're putting in the fentanyl, uh, the xylazine. And so if you haven't seen that, man, go watch that one to kind of explain a little bit more the international component of this drug trafficking. Um, and, and obviously the pharmaceutical one as well. So who knows who she was working with? Uh, it could have been just a drug trafficking organization, you know, that, that was kind of made up for this purpose and they're not affiliated. I don't know, we'll find out. But I find it ironic. And in particular San Jose, which I know some of you guys are from San Jose, you're familiar with it, um, large city, Northern California. So San Jose has a long history of corrupt and, and, and otherwise questionable acts by law enforcement, right? I mentioned Jacob Dominguez earlier. I did a video about him. Amazing young man, got murdered by police. Um, then the family turned around and uh, the, the police turned around and harassed the family. And the police officers association specifically turned around and harassed the family and tried to smut them up because they were upset that the cops killed their boy. Um, you know, so I'll link to that at the end of this too. Um, but but there's many instances of police brutality. I've been harassed by police in San Jose. I've been had hands put on me by police in San Jose as an adult outside of the gangbanging lifestyle, all that other stuff, right? Like just maybe 10 years ago. Um, they, they get down different in San Jose, you know, the, the, in terms of their aggressiveness, in terms of their profiling. And and it's all geared towards, you know, the Latino, Black, and, and somewhat Asian, you know, community. So here's this lady running an international drug trafficking, not running, a participant in. Again, I don't think that she was a major player in this. Uh, I'm really curious to see how she got roped in personally, um, how she came to be involved in this. That Maybe that'll come out. It probably won't because... For all intents and purposes, she's a cop, right? And so they're going to protect her and, and her image. They can't protect her from this. <laughs> this is extreme. You can't sell drugs out of your office for a decade. But uh, but they probably won't take a whole lot of steps to to really dog her out, you know. Um, reminds me of a guy, Stuart Hanley. I mean, uh, uh, Stu Forrest. Stuart Hanley's an attorney, dope Fed attorney I've worked with. Stu Forrest was the head of probation in San Mateo County. 
and he got popped for unmentionable stuff on his computer. And and they went through great steps to to try to keep stuff on the hush and to try to kind of preserve his image. And, and they were very gentle with him, uh, both in the way they treated him and in the time that he got. I expect to do the same thing, you know, so we'll see. Anyways, help others move with excess, man. That's what homies do. And, uh, yeah, neighborhood drug dealer just might be a cop. All right, you guys, take care.